Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm down here on the bench this morning getting ready to tear this guy apart. What is this? 20 some years ago I bought this at a uh, ham fest and it was a uh, center dipole feed with a one-to-one -one current ballon built in there. Now a one-to-one -one current ballon or choke um, is designed to choke off common mode interference. So interference that comes in equally on both sides of the antenna, so it's the same, uh, will get choked off before it comes down the wire. Also, um, it cuts down dramatically on the amount of uh, reflected power that makes it back down your coax. Uh, so a one-to-one -one current ballon is a useful thing, but this one's busted. You can see the end popped out of it there rattling so I got to cut this open. I'm going to salvage that one-to-one -one ballon in there. And what am I salvaging it for? Well I'm salvaging it for my next antenna project which is a backyard vertical. It's going to be a 33 foot vertical. I'm going to build it a couple of ways. Uh, firstly in sort of a portable fashion where you could take it out for field day or whatever and quickly erect it. And then I'm going to make it semi-permanent in the backyard. But it's going to use a different design from the classic verticals, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. So this is uh, the design of the antenna. Um, so, an end-fed wire, a simple end-fed wire, uh, there's a pretty popular design that uses a 9 to 1 un-un, which stands for unbalanced, unbalanced, and it's a, it's a transformer, it's an auto transformer. And you have a, an end-fed wire that comes down 9 to 1 on on and a length of coax that goes back to your radio. It's the simplest possible configuration. And it works okay. You need a tuner. Um, there's some tricks, uh, some, some lengths where you can get where it'll be resonant on most of the ham bands and, and usable without a tuner. But in general, you'll need a tuner for it to work well. Um, and it has uh, some disadvantages to it as well. Well, um, I built an, uh, an end-fed wire for my main antenna at the house, and when I first put it up, it, uh, it worked pretty well on most of the bands. It was tunable. I had a hard time on 80. But one problem with these things is the auto transformer, uh, the, it allows the shield of the coax that's going back to your radio to act like a counterpoise which simplifies the antenna, but also means that, you know, if you're running any kind of power, you're getting a lot of RF radiating off that coax, plus the RF coming back on the shield of the coax will confuse automatic tuners. And one way to um, reduce that, which I did with mine, is to put a ground, like a ground stake, right at the feed point and have this closer to the ground. Um, I did that with mine, and it helped. It helped quite a bit. Um, I still had some trouble with the uh, with the tuner. It would sometimes want to retune and get a little flaky, especially on 80 meters. And it was because I was still getting some RF back on that coax. I added uh, counterpoise wire to it. I added uh, about a 20 foot counterpoise wire to it, and that improved things as well. Connected to the ground and running off in the opposite direction of the antenna, um, that improved things as well. But I still had some RF coming back on that coax. Ultimately, the solution was putting a one-to-one -one current ballon um, a little ways back, maybe about six, eight inches back from the nine-to-one. And that really cut back on the amount of RF that was on the shield of the coax coming back. And then the uh, 20 to 30 foot counterpoise wire um, gave the transformer something to work against for the uh, radiator. And between the two, the antenna works pretty well. I can tune it on all of the bands and I uh, can tune it on 80 now uh, without the tuner going crazy. So this 1 to 1 current ball and really made a difference. I originally tried to build it into the same enclosure as the 9 to 1, but having the two toroids in close proximity, they interacted with each other and that got wacky. So I had to have about 8 inches of coax between the two. So that's my end fed wire design for the house here and it works really well. I can get on 160 through 10 meters and uh, it, it radiates pretty well. I'm happy with it. Well, about two and a half years ago, I 
did a field vertical for 20 through 15 meters. And the, uh, the video is quite old and really looks terrible compared to my current production standards, which are still not great. But um, my uh, 20 to 15 meter field antenna was simply a nine to one at the ground level, a 16 foot or 15 foot mast with about 16 foot of uh, wire going straight up of it, straight up it. So I took the end fed wire and just put it vertically and about 20 foot of coax going back to the radio. And at QRP, um, it works great. Uh, I've made all kinds of contacts. I've worked DX with it, with five watts easily into South America, up into Canada, and even across the pond a few times, QRP. With a little more power, um, getting into Europe was easy on 20 meters. And it was pretty broad banded. Um, so it was a really good antenna. Well, what I want to do for the backyard is I want to scale this up and I want to use what I've learned about the uh, end fed wire design um, here at the house and uh, make a bigger multiband vertical that can either be somewhat portable like this one is. This, this can be set up in about five minutes um, or be made semi-permanent. So that's my plan for the backyard vertical. Um, uh, a viewer, Jim, is, is sending me the MFJ 33 foot telescoping mast. So that's going to be the mast with a 32 to 33 foot um, radiator, radiator wire. 32.7 feet is a quarter wave on 40 meters, I think. So that's about right. Um, in, a simplest, in the simplest configuration, you could have a single 20 to 30 foot counterpoise wire that runs off. And that's going to probably pull the signal a little bit in that direction, giving it a little bit of gain in that direction or preference to that direction. So it could be somewhat ver uh, direc directional as well, which could be useful in the field. Um, at the house, I'll probably do two or three or four of these wires going off in, in the different directions to make it more um, even. But I'll use the 9 to 1 um, Bowen or Unun -un at, at the feed point at the ground. There'll be a ground rod here. I didn't draw it, but there'll be a, a six-foot ground rod directly in. And then a one-to-one -one current ballon and the coax running back up to the house. So I'm basically taking the end-fed wire and putting it vertically. Um, that, sh well, if it works as well as my little one did, as the 16-foot one did, which works really well, um, it'll be a great vertical. It'll probably work on 40 meters on up easy, uh, probably be tunable on 80 uh, might not work, you know, as well as a dipole on 80, but I bet it'll work. We'll find out. Uh, so anyway, that's the project I'm starting, my backyard vertical. And I'm starting with uh, salvaging this nine or this one to one current ballon. And now I've got to order some parts. I need to get a, a few more toroids. I need to get some weatherproof enclosures for these. Um, I need to get some coax. <laughs> so it's going to be an ongoing project. It's going to stretch out to probably at least three videos. Um, the next video will be winding the 9 to 1 and uh, building it and the uh, current violin into their boxes. So i got to get some parts for that, but that will be coming up in a week or so. And uh, I'll have a parts list at that point with the specs on the toroids and uh, uh, the rest of the parts that I'm using to build those. So that will be the next video. We'll build those. And then uh, in a month or so when the ground thaws, um, We'll put together the uh, portable field version of it and do some testing with it. So hopefully before the end of February, we'll get uh, a, a thaw and I can get outside and do that. Uh, but it might be March. We'll see. So that's the backyard vertical in the planning stages right now. In uh, a week or so, I hope to have the uh, build video done on the 9 to 1 and 1 to 1. So we'll have a nice detailed video on winding your own 9 to 1 un un um, which you could then use for your own end fed wire antenna projects. So stay tuned for those, and uh, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos, and if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.